YouTube. Thank you for watching this far into the video and happy 4th of July. In this video, I wanted to explore the features that Wise 2023 brought with Niagara and the Unreal Engine. I wanted to push it to its limits to see how much I could get out of it and just to really explore the implementation and workflow that is necessary to get it to work. It turns out I ended up having to learn more about Niagara and how the systems provide data out which WISE can use. I discovered the importance between CPU and GPU sims and what you can do with them. I started off first with a CPU sim, a very basic one, a tutorial I found online, a very easy one to follow. I'll post all of my source material in the uh, below. So this one is, like I said, a CPU sim, which Wise really likes. Uh, the, the Niagara Wise system really leans on CPU sims. That being said, you can use GPU sims. You just have to export particle information out, uh, which they don't cover in their documentation on how to, but luckily there are resources. And again, I will post that in the link. Uh, in the links below. Uh, so yeah, this one, I pretty much did everything on the directional burst. Uh, it was ma my main orb, kind of where everything is derived from. The color, the speed direction, everything attaches to it. Very easy to do. Uh, I basically, I'm posting the launch sound at its um, initialization and then as it begins to move and update I post the persistent event and update that which is over here which is the tail sound of Shinawoo sound. This one is generating a location and death event which is what I then use to do more sound on the explosion. And then just for good measure, I stopped the persistent event, uh, which is the tail and the rocket ball kind of like sound. Um, yeah. I mean, that's, this is, like I said, it's a very straightforward when you have CPU sims. Now, once I got this working, I wanted to continue to explore how this could be taken even further. And that's what I did. I followed a pretty in-depth tutorial on creating some really great looking fireworks where you can do images and different types of explosions, colors, sizes. It was really, really in-depth. Um, I'll, I'll share all this again all below. This one, yeah, I'll start with the Niagara stuff. Uh, very similar CPU on this one, so I was able to post and do all this. Um, however, the, most of the rest the rest of it was GPU. Um, I did this in a few days, so I didn't want to go through the pain of trying to get the particle exporting. Um, um, so what I ended up doing here really is quite simple. I'm just posting an event. Um, the only one I didn't do was the sparkles, uh, which have their own sound on the Niagara, uh, sim actually, where they could probably, uh, where is it? Here it is. I think I'm doing it here at least. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing on the sim and I can go over the why stuff after this. So yeah, these are getting just a basic post event on the rocket itself. So it plays at its location. Uh, yeah. 
forgot to cover something is, uh, well, actually it's a good transition, I guess. Um, with the previous one, this one, the basic one, because it's a CPU SIM, um, I wanted to explore uh, doing more with it because it was pretty straightforward to set up. So I ended up doing the exporting of uh, particle data to Blueprint. I'm just getting the position. Um, I, I could probably get shape position or something as well. I'm just getting particle position. And I'm exporting that to the Blueprint. Um, basically, you have to fire it on begin play. You tell it, hey, here's the... Uh, callback. Um, there's a bunch of documentation on this. Again, I'll share that. Um, you have to interface with Niagara. Then once you get that, you can create this event um, looping through all the particles. And then basically I'm looking at the player's location, particle location, and I'm getting the distance between that. And then I'm actually setting a RTPC value based on the distance between the player and the, the particle location. Um, this allows me to do a blend container in WISE um, and change the the sound of the explosion based on the distance you are from it. Now, you could do this. You could use that many different ways, uh, but I did it just to experiment, have fun. This was just for fun, just to change things around, just to have some variation if I wanted to, but I did the other tutorial to do the more in-depth fireworks. So yeah. Um, I mean, this pretty much covers the unreal side of things. Um, yeah, let's jump over to wise. So very straightforward setup in wise. Um, using auto defined banks again, really works well. I have no complaints. The auto load feature on it is fantastic. Um, yeah. So yeah, cool. I got the, the blend container already pulled up. Yay. Um, yeah. So I'm just using that one RTPC to blend between these three, uh, explosion sounds, uh, should put it on actually. Yeah. Yeah. That's between that one. So yeah, based on the distance from the from the explosion to the player, it will change the RTPC every single time there there's a call to this event here. So it's somewhat efficient. Um, it's you know not ticking. So yeah, every time this event gets called, sets the value, moves the RTPC, plays the sound. Um, yeah. Again, very, very straightforward setup. Um, I did a bit of, well, maybe not much. Yeah, I know I did it somewhere. I did it somewhere. I did some voice limiting here and there because um, it was just getting too chaotic in places just to be sure. Uh, you know, I wasn't getting more than one sound per burst, you know, explosion kind of thing. The whole night, like, scatters out. But yeah, um, yeah, it was a fun little dive into what the Niagara system can support uh, into WISE now uh, definitely works. I mean, I, I would recommend if using it, work with your technical artists to make sure they're not doing things that will make your life more difficult than it needs to be. Um, you know, if, if they are doing GPU sims, make sure you know that in advance so you can export the particle data and work that way. Uh, but if they're using CPU sims, then you can do a lot just right in the Niagara effect. Um, and of course, you know, best would be if they're just doing everything in a blueprint and they're setting it up like that. Uh, but and you know, everyone does that more. Some people really like the uh, Niagara interface, but uh, yeah. Uh, I think that about covers this little project I whipped up in a few days just for fun. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you learned something. Feel free to like and subscribe. Uh, yeah, if you have any thoughts, feedback, suggestions, feel free to comment. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.